Good morning and welcome to the Cathedral Church here in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Today is the third Sunday in our Advent journey and our theme is one of joy, which is why we have pink or rose-colored vestments this morning. And we will, in just a bit, light the pink candle on the Advent wreath. If you're watching online, this is our in-person 10 a.m. service. Currently through COVID, we are just having the one morning service and a 4 p.m. Evensong. This week, the Evensong is featuring the Cathedral Choir. Next Sunday, December 19th, a Chorister's Christmas with Capella Regalis Men and Boys Choir. That will be a ticketed event and seating is limited by COVID protocols. So it, would, it will also be available as an online subscription broadcast after the event. For ticket information, go to www.capellaregalis.com. Throughout the week, we offer some other opportunities to join us in person. Wednesday mornings at 7.30 a.m. A meditation group gathers in the Great Hall Wednesdays at noon and on Fridays at noon, a Book of Common Prayer communion service. Online, on our Facebook and YouTube channels, you'll find a daily offering of morning prayer, Monday through Friday. You will find this Sunday service, a Wednesday midweek check-in, and on Thursdays, an online meditation group. They're currently offering an Advent study program, this week with a meditation by Dr. James Finley. That group meets via Zoom, for the link or more information, send an email to prayasyoucan3, the number three, at gmail.com. The Monday prayer group, which meets on Zoom, is on break for Advent and Christmas. More to come in the new year. The Cathedral Church's seasonal newsletter, The Cornerstone, was just hit the press on Friday and you can find that on the Cathedral website for reading or for downloading. And I also have a few printed copies of this at the back of the church, so if you're not a current subscriber, pick one of those up as you're going out the door. Also online, you will find a link to Cathedral Happenings, which lists all of our announcements and activities for our community and its many groups. On the website, you'll also find the text for today's bulletin, as well as Sunday School material. Speaking of Sunday School, practice will take place today for a pageant that will be the focus of next Sunday's worship. If you'd like to join in the pageant and can't be here today for the rehearsal, we welcome you next Sunday. We just ask that you arrive about a half an hour early so you can be fitted for a costume and assigned a part. Thank you for the many contributions to our Christmas outreach projects. And if you're still looking for gift ideas, Check out the Primates World Relief and Development Fund website for ideas that have both meaning and impact. One final note, looking ahead to Christmas, we have outlined our approach in the cathedral happenings, in a parish-wide mail-out, and in the cornerstone with respect to Christmas services. With Christmas Eve on a Friday of this year, there will be a service at noon, four o'clock, a youth-led service, 7 p.m., and then 11 p.m. with Capella Regalis Men and Boys Choir and Maritime Brass. Saturday, Christmas Day, a service at 10 a.m., and then Sunday, the Feast of Stephen, again, another service at 10 a.m. So that's six services in 48 hours. All services will require registering online as we are limited to 100 seats. Proof of vaccination is not required, but masks and distancing apply. Pre-registration not only confirms you have a seat, it also provides us with necessary contact tracing, which means there are no forms to fill out on arrival, making getting into the building, particularly inclement weather, much easier. Now the Eventbrite system will be open for those Christmas services beginning Monday, December 20th at 9 a.m. That's a lot to remember. If you're online, you can just rewind, listen to it again. For those in-house, we do have copies of those announcements on a yellow sheet at the back of the church. There, big sigh. Now, for the Sunday school folks that are here today, just gonna ask you if you'd come up to the front a little bit. We're gonna talk a little bit more about Mike here. We're going to talk a little bit more about Advent being a journey and about like 
traveling somewhere, going someplace. Have you ever gone anywhere and gotten lost? Anybody ever gotten lost? Yeah? Sometimes it's easy to get lost, not just little people, but big people too. And years ago, before they had GPS systems, it was pretty easy to get lost, especially if you were in a new place. And one of the neat things about a GPS, or if you're using your phone, if you get lost, it'll tell you where you should go. And if you make a wrong turn, it'll say, whoop, correcting, correcting, or reorienting, or sending you back where you need to go. You might remember last week, Debbie was trying to make her way through this maze. And Debbie never finished that. <laughs> but one of the things you notice, she started off well, didn't she? And then she hit a roadblock, which means you have to turn around and find another way. And that's kind of what today's lesson is all about. It's about a man named John the Baptist saying, sometimes we make wrong choices. And when we do, we need to find our way again. If we kind of get lost in what we're doing or the way we're acting, we need to change our way. So here's a neat experiment you can do at home or here. And yeah? Did you find the way out already? I'm going to have you finish that afterwards. Okay, so what we're going to do is make a compass. Anybody know what a compass is? Yeah? it tells you, and usually in this part of the world, it tells you where north is. And once you find north, if you have a map, then you can figure out where you are. So, do you have any idea where north is while you're sitting here on the floor? Which direction is north? Point north. Okay, you're thinking north is that way. We're gonna find out. So here's what we're gonna do. Let's see if I still end up on screen. This kind of works backwards, so I have to be over here. So, what you need for this is a cork. You might have one of those at home from a bottle. Take a cork. You're also going to need a needle. And be careful because needles are sharp. And just a regular sewing needle. But then you need something with a magnet on it. And, oops, I'm going to, who's around that's fast? Gay. I forgot to put water in this. Can you just run and put some water in there? You've got a few minutes. Okay, so you need a needle a cork, and then you need something that has a magnet on it. Probably on your fridge you have magnets, right? Things with magnets. So take one of those off. You're going to take your needle, and you're just going to stroke it over. And the important thing is you keep doing it in the same way. You have to do this a fairly long time. Just stroke it over the magnet. Keep stroking it over. It might take you 50 times. But what you're doing is taking the needle and magnetizing it. Now, here's the amazing thing. Then you take this, you just set that on the floor. Great, thank you very much. So get this nice and magnetized. Then we're gonna take and slice a little piece off the cork. So you have a little round circle cut off your cork. You're gonna set the needle on the top of that. And then we're gonna take a little tiny piece of tape and Hold the needle on there. Then we're going to set this, oops. My tape isn't as sticky as it should be. We're going to set that in the water. And you can also use a piece of styrofoam. But you'll see, see how it starts to, actually we'll give it a little spin here. And you watch and see what happens. Oops, got stuck on the side. A bigger bowl would be easier. And it will point to the north. Now, Charlotte, you thought... Ella. Ella, sorry. You thought it was that way, but it's telling me it's this way. So, 
I have this nifty app on my phone which has a built-in compass. And if we set this on the floor, you can see the compass. See the little red end? That's exactly north, which is exactly where that is pointing. Isn't that amazing? So if you were out in the woods and you had a map, you could reorient or readjust where you're going by making yourself a nifty little compass or having a compass on your phone, perhaps. One of the other interesting things you can do if you're ever hiking in the woods, most trees have moss growing on them on the north side, which is another way of figuring out where you are if you ever get lost in the woods. The reason for that is the south side of the tree usually gets more sun, and so the north side tends to be shaded and moss is able to grow on the damper, cooler side of the tree. So there you go. You can make one of those at home, and we have that picture on the website. So shows you the little piece of cork, your needle, your water. You can also make one hanging on a thread, but for my stubby fingers, that's hard to do. But it'll work the same way. You just dangle a needle off a thread, and you can make a compass that way too. Also want to remind you that we're looking for angels to hang from the cathedral for Christmas, and we've got a whole bunch of patterns online so you can make some of those. Some of them are, are as simple as just cutting out a picture, and we have all these pictures available online, and we'd like to dangle them from the ceiling along with 2,000 lights. Won't that be amazing? Okay, you're, yeah? I'm going to give you that and the marker. If you get that done, you bring it back to me, okay? So they're heading off to Sunday school to practice the pageant. I'm going to join them as well, and I have my keys in my pocket. Good morning. Welcome on this damp morning. But aren't we lucky that we're not in the middle of a hurricane or what was that thing that went through Kentucky? Tornadoes. So we are very lucky here in, uh, in Nova Scotia. And actually, the dean is now going to go to Sunday school. Is that correct? Okay. The reason that we're in pink this morning is that this is the third Sunday of Advent, and we relax some of the, uh, if any of us have been fasting or doing anything like Lent, which we sometimes do during Advent, this is not as severe a Sunday, and so we are in pink and we'll be lighting, <clears throat> actually it's rose, it's not pink, and we're going to light the third candle. So I would invite the people who are looking after the candle lighting to come forward. It's a reunion. Every time we go home, every time we embrace those we love, no matter how long it has been, it feels like sunrise, like the clouds are parting and the rain has ended. It is joy, nothing less than pure joy, to grab hold of those who are at home for us, who make home for us. Whether we wake up to them every day or travel many miles to see them again, it is joy to go home. The prophet Zephaniah tells us to rejoice at the thought of going home. The prophet tells us to imagine being set free, being unburdened, being released to live, to fully live in the grace and wonder of life itself, surrounded by those who love us like no one else. And then to live like that was our truth even now, even here, it is joy to go home. 
John the Baptist reminds us, however, that it takes choices to live in this joy. It doesn't just happen. We choose to make life a joy by how we love others, by how we serve and give and care for others, by how we do the job we do and how we impact the world around us. We build joy as we build a home in this world and the next. We light these candles, hope, and of peace and of joy as a sign that we are on our way home and we walk with a skip in our step because we can see our destination, the joy of coming home. And our opening hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God of power and mercy, you call us once again to celebrate the coming of your Son. Remove those things which hinder love of you, that when he comes, we may find us waiting in awe and wonder for him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And please be seated as we listen to Holy Scripture. Those of you with hearing aids and glasses will know what a nuisance these can be to take off. A reading from Paul, Paul's letter to the Christian community in Philippi. Rejoice <coughs> in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are reading Canticle 9, and the congregation responds with the bold text. Surely it is God who saves me. 
I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name be exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory Glory to to the the Father, Father, and to the Son, and and to to the the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, beginning, is now, now, and and will will be forever. forever. Amen. Bless you, Heather, and may the Holy Spirit be in your heart, in your mind, and on your lips as you proclaim for us the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, what then should we do? In reply, he said to them, whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none. And whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water. But one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his thrashing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But to chafe, he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. We are called again to celebrate the coming of God's Son, 
May we learn to remove the things from our lives that hinder the love of God so that when Jesus comes, we are waiting in awe and in wonder. Amen. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to this third Sunday of Advent, where we just witnessed the lighting of the candle of joy in our Advent wreath. So, on this Sunday, where we experience and share the joy of waiting for the coming of Jesus, what do we have for the gospel reading, I ask you? We have, among other things, John the Baptist calling the crowds who have come specifically to see him, and he's telling them that they're a brood of vipers, and also warning them that the axe is ready to chop down the barren trees and burn them. Wow. Try finding some joy in that. I dare you. So looking at that, I may have mentioned before, I lead a lectionary discussion group on Tuesday afternoons. And if you'd like to be part of it, give me your email address. I'd love to include you. There ends the ad. However, this lectionary group I look at the readings for the upcoming Sunday for that group, usually on Tuesday morning, to kind of get a feel for the readings before we start discussing them. And if I know I'm going to be preaching on that Sunday, like this week, I usually start my reading with the gospel. Now, <laughs> The gospel you just heard Heather read, when I read that on Tuesday morning, I had just handed in my very last paper. I was top full of anxiety. I was running on way too little sleep, and I was really tired. So when I read that gospel, what I saw and heard in that gospel was the brood of vipers, the axe chopping down the trees, and the chaff being burned in the unquenchable fire. Well, how on earth was I going to write a sermon for the Sunday of joy and rejoicing from that, I wondered. However, the other person who joined me on Tuesday afternoon zoomed in, and she was literally bubbling over with enthusiasm. Aren't these wonderful readings, she said. She said, I wrote down a list of words that just spoke to me from them because I heard joy and rejoice and hope and love, peace, spread the word. I just love it when there's this wonderful and related thread that runs through the readings, don't you? I kind of looked at her on Zoom, but nonetheless, I looked at her in some disbelief. And I asked her to explain how and where she saw that positive thread running through the readings. Because quite honestly, I hadn't seen it. So she did, and by the time she finished, I was also seeing that positive thread. Context matters. Because, I mean, take a look at our canticle for this morning. It says, we will not fear but trust in God, our sure defense, stronghold, and savior. We will ring out our joy because God is in our midst. What a wonderful reason 
what better reason to be joyful than God is with us? Paul's letter to the Philippians tells us to rejoice because the Lord is near and further he tells us that the peace of God will guard our hearts and our minds. That's about where I started seeing that positive thread that she had been talking about. But then we come to the gospel. This is a time of year after such a year when we might be tempted, as I certainly was, to get all John the Baptist-y and growl and snarl about the lack of human kindness and consideration and love in the world around us. But she taught me to take a closer look, and I invite you to do that with me, because in between the snakes and the axe at the beginning of the gospel and the unquenchable fire burning the chaff at the end of the gospel, what is happening in the middle? John is telling the crowds that simply being a descendant of Abraham is not enough to share in the kingdom of God. It would be like John the Baptist telling me that having been born an Anglican and been an Anglican from birth to now and attending church every Sunday isn't all there is to being a Christian. It would be the same as if my priest said to me, okay, you're baptized, that's great. What have you done? to demonstrate your faith. That's what John is telling the crowds. To share in the kingdom of God, I, we, have to walk the walk, so to speak, as well as talk the talk. John tells us that we need to share our abundance, whether it's food or clothing or money or vaccines, we are called to share what we have with those who have very little to none. And we have to resist the temptation to be greedy. And we need to be honest and upright in our dealings with others. St. Paul echoes this when he encourages the Philippians to be known to everyone for their gentleness. An important trait, wouldn't you say? Did you know that those acts of love and kindness are one of the two ways that we can rejoice in the Lord. And a second is to have and maintain as much as is possible an attitude of trust in God in the midst of life's difficulties and troubles. According to Paul, Worries and anxieties should have no part in the life of a Christian, believe it or not. How many of you have troubles and worries and anxieties? <laughs> oh yeah, because <laughs> we're human, right? However, St. Paul says that we should have no anxiety at all but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Hang on to that for a moment. Because it's true, Christmas is always 
the busiest season of the year, right? Yeah. Yet, while others are stressed and anxious about so many things, while we are stressed and anxious about so many things, we are reminded to focus our attention on Jesus, the center, after all, of this joyous season and the cause for our rejoicing. Whenever problems or difficulties or anxieties arise in our lives, we need to remember we're not carrying those alone. We need to remember to take those to God in prayer. The theologian Herbert O'Driscoll puts it this way, Instead of merely harboring our worries, we should place them right up front before God as material for prayer. Then they cease to be worries, locked into the seething prison of our own minds and hearts. They become prayer requests, openly expressed, honestly admitted. And if we do this, St. Paul tells us, in the words that literally shine out of the gospel, that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, not passes, but surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. In the craziness of the next few weeks, I would encourage all of us to rejoice in the Lord by practicing kindness and gentleness, giving and love and by laying our anxieties and worries and fears in front of God in prayer. Let's look for the joy in this season. Let's rejoice in the joy in this season because I wish for each and every one of us the hope, the peace, and the joy of Advent. Rejoice. And again I say, rejoice. Thank you, Debbie. Those are great instructions and great advice. Rejoice. So now having heard the word of God read and having heard uh, the challenge of how we will respond, let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
For the prayers of the people, you may remain standing or you may sit. I invite you to remain standing or sit as you are comfortable and able for the prayers of the people. As we wait for Christ to come among us, let us make our requests known to God, our stronghold and sure defense, saying, Come, Holy One, and save us. Come, Come Holy, Holy One, and save, and save us. us. In today's worldwide cycle of prayer, we remember our own Anglican Church of Canada and Linda, our primate, David, our metropolitan bishop, and Sandra, our diocesan bishop, as we surrender our anxieties to God and trust in God's providence for all our needs and challenges. Come, Holy One, and save us. For our parish family, remembering especially Paul Ardeen and Rector, Helen, our associate priest, and Ray, Heather, and Maggie are deacons. We also remember Paul, Nick, and Russ, and all who glorify your holy name through their gift of music in this place. We pray that we may rejoice in all the blessings, opportunities, and gifts that God has given us. Come, Holy One, and save us. For the advent of peace and justice throughout the world, that God will give insight and new vision to all who work towards these goals. Come, Holy One, and save us. For all who feel overwhelmed by life, that they may rejoice in the Lord always, who promises to renew their spirits and fill their hearts with peace, remembering especially the homeless, the shut-ins, and the downtrodden members of our society. Come, Holy One, and save us. For all who live daily with oppression, injustice, and hunger, and for those who have asked for our prayers, today we remember Patricia and Ed, James and Cynthia, Russ, Douglas, Ian, Marilyn, Barb, Anne and Raphael, Christopher, Patrick, Angie, Lily, David, Anna, Bob, Elizabeth, Cara, Robert, Andrew, Frank, Linda, Randy, Bill, Marlene, Fraser, Anne and family, Bev and family. That they may be touched and strengthened by God's healing love. Come, Come Holy Lord, One, and save, save us. For those who have died, remembering today especially Marguerite, that the one who comes in glory will gather them into the joy of his kingdom. Come, Come Holy One, and save us. save us. Lifting our voices with all creation, with Mary, the God-bearer, and all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. O God, the fountain of life and rejoicing, hear the prayers we offer this day and restore our hopes that we may live faithful lives sustained by your everlasting strength in the power of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Come, Holy One, and save us. Amen. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes sinners and invites us to this table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And our hymn, Comfort, Comfort Ye My People. these gifts from God's creation, let us give thanks and offer ourselves in love and service. Let us pray. God of hope, renew in us the joy of your salvation and make us a living sacrifice to you for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <clears throat> Eternal God, source of all being, we give you thanks and praise for your faithful love. You call us into friendship with you and one another to be your holy people, a sign of your presence in the world. When those we trust betray us, unfailingly you remain with us. When we injure others, you confront us in your love and call us to the paths of righteousness. You stand with the weak and those broken and alone whom you have always welcomed home, making the first last and the last first. Therefore, we raise our voices with angels and archangels forever praising you and singing.
Blessed are you, O Holy One. When Hagar was driven into the wilderness, you followed her and gave her hope. When Joseph was sold into bondage, you turned malice to your people's good. When you called Israel out of slavery, you brought them through the wilderness into the promised land. When your people were taken into exile, you wept with them by the river of Babylon and carried them home. At the right time, you sent your anointed one to stand with the poor, the outcast, and the oppressed. Jesus touched lepers and the sick and healed them. He accepted water from a woman of Samaria and offered her the water of new life. Christ knew the desolation of the cross and opened the way for all humanity into the redemption of your reconciling love. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus, at supper with his friends, took bread and gave you thanks, broke the bread and gave it to them and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Loving and Holy One, recalling Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you these gifts, longing for the bread of tomorrow and the wine of the age to come, Therefore, we proclaim our hope. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your spirit on these gifts that through them you may sustain us in our hunger for your peace. We hold before you all whose lives are marked by suffering, our sisters and brothers. When we are broken and cast aside, embrace us in your love. Restore us, O God. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, O source of all life, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God of promise, you prepare a banquet for us in your kingdom. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. given for you.
Let us pray. Merciful God, may this Eucharist free us from our sins, fill us with unending joy, prepare us for the birthday of our Savior. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, who is Lord now and forever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all who you love today and always. Amen. And now we will sing the hymn, Hail to the Lord's Anointed.